let's do another let's do another slice of small bowel this one is more likely to be uh, jejunum than ileum because the villi are more developed and there is a relative lack of uh, lymphoid tissue in the submucosa nevertheless let's look at it again and we could bring out one or two things that we uh, didn't bring out when we looked at the ileum you could see very very nice well-formed villi or papillary mucosal projections this entire layer from here to here is the mucosa here is the submucosa here is the muscularis and there may not be much connective tissue or serosa but uh, maybe we'll find a little bit anyway let's make a little point about this case oh here we go here's a serosa there's probably a nice layer of mesothelial cells there. Here's the fatty connective tissue. Here's the, here's the outer muscle layer. There's the inner circular layer. There's the submucosa, and the, all these wide spaces are vessels. And here are your nice uh, villi of the mucosa. Let's um, point out a couple things we missed before. Uh, once again, you can see beautifully arranged uh, villi. You could also notice that there is a relative uh, dearth of uh, or relative lack of goblet cells relative to these absorptive cells. That's another reason why we have to be in the jejunum rather than ileum. Look how much nicer, looser, gentler, more delicate the uh, connective tissue of the lamina propria is. These are most certainly lacteals large vessels lined by endothelial cells just like venules except there's no blood cells in them uh, you can see the various types of cells within the uh, lamina propria such as lymphocytes macrophages plasma cells some smooth muscle here uh, fibers surrounding the lacteals or blood vessels and here we are now uh, at the base of the mucosa and probably if you looked at these cells, you could see it's probably a little thin strip of muscularis mucosa. There's probably some smooth muscle cells here too. All the rest of this connective tissue is loose, has some adipose cells, a lot of blood vessels, some denser connective tissue. This is all submucosa. And then we see the circular layer of uh, smooth muscle. Then we see a couple of ganglion cells here. Then we see the longitudinal layer. And last but not least, we could see that this is the beginning of the uh, serosa, also known as the uh, visceral uh, peritoneum. Also notice there's a few beautiful little mesothelial cells here and here and here and here and here and here and here, here all along the surface. And here's a real nice one too. The thing I wanted to point out that we didn't mention in the other one is sometimes when you look at the base of the mucosa, you will see cells that have granules. Okay, if the granules are quite red and they are on the luminal or the apical aspect of the nucleus and they are dense, they are probably paneth cells, P-A-N-E-T-H. This could be one, uh, I can't tell because that's as high as I could go and magnification. Perhaps we could find uh, another one which is more likely. These are probably paneth cells here. You see those dark reddish granules and they are on the luminal or apical aspect of the cell. Those are just secreting various uh, things into the gland which uh, uh, will help neutralize uh, bacteria. Uh, and if you look, there may be some cells which have granules towards the basal end because they're not secreting stuff into the lumen. They're secreting it into these delicate blood vessels along here. Those are the enteroendocrine cells. And those are the cells of the mucosa which secrete endocrine substances for a variety of reasons. It's much easier to identify these paneth cells because the granules are a little more clearly red and uh, coarse than the enteroendocrine cells. The enteroendocrine cells can very easily look something like this and just have a very tiny granules and a small centrally located nucleus like most endocrine cells do or like most uh, neuroendocrine cells do. I thank you very much.